right. Okay. This is the part where we hear the intro. The intro is playing. And, and, uh, and we just <laughs> pretend, it's, we pretend we're having a conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good one, good one. Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, wow. Okay, so I'm going to put this aside for, uh, for a bit. <laughs> where and, are we? <laughs> and, and greet you both. Uh, beautiful people, beautiful people. Not only pretty, but also beautiful. Yeah. Um, kind, not nice, also. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're at uh, uh, Lamifa restaurant in the uh, space of uh, Anomaly Art Club. And uh, which, which neighborhood is it, uh, Amit? Which neighborhood? Huh? It's, it's already Friedrichstein? Wow, cool. Bordering Prince Lauerberg, yeah, I guess. Stockauer Straße. <laughs> Yeah, so first of all, shout out to Anomaly for enabling uh, us uh, to have this space today. Uh, very chicky and still very true. A lot of stuff happened uh, on in this uh, room and next to it. True, true. Backstage many, many right things, many things have happened. <coughs> many things have happened yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> and, al and also, furthermore, I never know when, where, where the next uh, uh, episode will take place. Yes, which is nice. Nev never let them know your next move. Yeah. You know? It's always a, it's always a pop up. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Um, Thank you for coming back, Isa. Yeah. Also. Thank you for having me back. Um, the last episode was a uh, very, a very, a very new shift. Uh, having a, 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 having a, having a guest, a third, a third panel member, and I think we covered some new topics. Um, got a bit deeper into some of our existing ones through uh, having a further, further, further counsel. And definitely elicited a lot of uh, a lot of attention and response. So thank you for the engagement, and thank you for coming back to maybe cover some of those um, more touched on topics and uh, talk about some more. Yes, I think we definitely touched uh, touched the spot on some on some topics, uh, which uh, awakened uh, an, a, a mostly healthy reaction from uh, some unhealthy reaction as well. But that's I think part of the yeah. discussion. What 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 does unhealthy mean? Um, I don't know. We will we will get into it probably in a minute. But when you see that uh, a video or a snippet is uh, uh, referring to toxic uh, masculinity, and then you have super toxic masculine comments on that same video, you see exactly uh, how existent the, the problem is, uh, or how uh, still uh, valid uh, uh, those uh, those uh, themes are, and how actual they are for our times. The interesting thing is like. Um often when there's uh, people engaging, then there, there, there can be some element of either acknowledgement of their, their uh, approval or, or, or recognition uh, or, or a bit of a conversation. Mm. Um, I did notice, like apart from the occasional <laughs> anomaly, <laughs> um, that this time there were a few, uh, a number of these I guess, super, to super toxic comments or comments from super toxic people uh, in a toxic masculine sense. But then realizing that whatever engagement you could even attempt to have on an online forum is not going to plant a seed deep enough in some cases. Mm. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and just, just like this observation of also being, there being quite a few like uh, double taps on the message. Yeah, I agree. Da, 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 da. Mm. Um, I, th I think it shows that like that, that you know, there, there is, there is this, this uh, demographic and also furthermore, um, it, a, a big, a big um, uh, response was people saying, "Ah, oh, this isn't normal straight behavior." Uh, mm. for, for example, yeah. so, so I think I think kind of defining what was meant by normal uh, or, or common yes. as well. I think it will we'll be nice to get into this. Uh, maybe, maybe yeah, maybe maybe to rephrase it, what what I said is that even normal behavior. So I didn't say that that was normal behavior because yes. it isn't. But even normal, just normal behavior is already very toxic yes so if what is considered just, today to be to yeah, be normal to, is already yeah. too much and should the, I, I mean basically what you meant is that the norm should be changed anyway that's something different but i mean if um um because i now get a lot of comments like isabel hates white heterosexual especially middle-aged cis men um no i don't but they not are all the men problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's also but i get deeper yeah, I know, into I that know, I know, I know. um but basically every problem that we face on this earth is created 
by this type of people. So, um, and, and that's just statistics, and, and, and we know that that's the case, and it's not that all those men are uh, toxic or or bad or even if, and what I'm saying is even if the intentions are not bad just because how this society works and that for example a simple thing as um, medication or the safety belt of a car um, the, te the test uh, the, the dummies uh, um, or or white, straight, heterosexual men. Um, so it's not made for us women, it's not made for um, people of color, it's not made for every marginalized group. So that's what I meant. Yeah, uh, the consensus is uh, such a behavior. <clears throat> whether we like it, whether we agree with it or not, the, the consensus, the norm has become a behavior that is not what uh, marginalized groups or what, what, what women in this particular case yes. would see as healthy communication or a exactly. healthy approach. Exactly. And <clears throat> that normal has exactly. been normalized. It's been normalized. Yeah, it's been normalized. It, so, so, so normal... <laughs> it's funny because yeah, but that, normalized so, is, I think, different than normal. Exactly. That, exactly. Uh, because we normal uh, out of that uh, becomes things we normalize. So... Um, by thinking uh, that you can uh, make a pass on your coworker uh, because that's how the environment works um, is not okay, and then we normalize it. But, but it, that, that's not how the environment works. That's how the environment assume they work. That it works, you know, because because like, like so you have this and you're like, well that's not normal. I was like, well, why not? You're a woman. And I, I want to have sex with you, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try. Let's let's yeah. refer to a specific example from the comments. Uh, we had a guy <clears throat> that said he was trying to be very nice. Yeah. He said, "I understand that I you but don't nice guy. Oh, this is some tough love." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I don't I don't think we have to mention like names, nicknames, or whatever. But he said basically, if I ask you for your phone number, you don't have to answer. If you say no. You also don't have to answer why, but I do have the right to ask you why. And some of the others uh, that commented or supported him, or he, he, even he himself said in the next comment, if I'm in school and I uh, go through a test and I fail the test, I have the full right to ask the teacher, why did I fail? So I can know the, the mistake or can do my learnings. And then I answered him, I answered as a technical team, and I said, listen, if you're in school, if you do a test, if you fail, it's the teacher's responsibility to educate you. If you are in a club, it's nobody's responsibility. If you're on the street, it's nobody's responsibility, especially not the woman you are approaching. It's not her responsibility to educate you. If she wants to, she will uncover the reason and will tell you why, but it's completely her freedom and her decision to tell you no or not even tell you anything. Exactly. If, if this person decides that their boundary is, is lays in zero communication, they have the full right to not even communicate to you. Yeah. And you decide what you take as a learning from that. So basically what I feel from him is that this um, alibi of being uh, of trying to be curious and trying to learn and trying to gain some experience with women and flirting gives him the, the, the righteousness to say, hey, I have the right to, to ask why. If you, if you do disagree, to, if you don't want to communicate with me, I have the right to, to understand why you don't like me. And, and this is actually what I meant. Uh, and, and, and then there's another delicate uh, situation that's happening uh, that's also was that was also one of the comments is that a guy said i'm dating a lot of uh latin uh, oh i saw this one um, i saw this one yeah and um, um <laughs> and, and that and, and, and there and that's but dude, <laughs> let me tell you something. It's because we, because I am from South America, and also we were taught that we should play a game, which it, that it's, 
it, it's it's not even okay. And if you are flirting already and you are dating and you show interest in to, to each other, play the game for crying out loud. But if I say no, I'm not playing a fucking game. Yeah. If you just approach me to tell me that <clears throat> I look good or give me a... Oh, you look, you look exotic. You look exotic. You look exotic. Where are you exotic. from? Where are you from? Uh, <laughs> then when I say no, or, or 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 when we say no, we really mean no. Yeah, even in the game, there are safe words, you know, and uh, I think uh, there are not enough uh, red lines drawn in the in the general game of flirt, so people can even think about interpreting a no as a maybe. And also that was maybe a hundred years ago. We are, we're, we're, we evolved. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and luckily, and I think women were already evolving, but we didn't have a chance to speak up. We could not even speak up. Maybe in Neanderthal times, uh, yeah. it was okay for a man to come with a stick and hit her on the <laughs> head yeah. and put her on the shoulder and go and mate drag with her. her. By the hairs. You yeah. know, maybe it was normal and women were like, well, "It's yeah. okay, I can, I can give birth to his child." You know, but uh, today it's like we're playing a whole different game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. have to found maybe a school of uh, flirt. What do you well, say there about is that, actually. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe we can share this on on the. There is a um, platform. I think it's based in Paris. Okay. Uh, uh, where uh, else? Uh, <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> but th now we're talking. We're, we're back into techno scene, right? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe, probably. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's about how to flirt on the dance floor. Uh -huh, okay. Um, maybe we can all share it after. Uh, it's so sad that this. people in the 21st century need this, but they need this. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I, I have an issue with what? this. 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 Um, how to flirt on the dance floor. Yeah. Like, like this is like, <laughs> if you, there are better places to, I mean, I mean, okay, again, it depends on his definition of the word flirt, because yeah. to me, in, in my understanding of the word flirt, flirting is around kind of behavior and choice of words. Yeah. Because the dance floor is a physical space. You know? Yeah. So, 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 like, yeah. They, 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 you can they, slip a word or no, two. But, you, you it's, <laughs> but I think what 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 they may, may meant to say is that Rave. I think I think in general how how we used to flirt um, uh, it, it is it is becoming such a problem. Uh, let me tell you that every woman, and I mean every woman. And I'm talking again from a woman's perspective because we can dug, dig into how many men also face this, are um, either sexually abused, um, being touched, being um, um, encountered someone who just showed their dick in the street. Every woman, That's ask a, a woman, big, big. ask a woman, and she faced something. So the problem is bigger than we think. It's not about just being or just the, the rape that we see as uh, problematic, but it's more than, than, uh, than being raped. But in between that, um, there is a lot going on that we as women don't feel safe. Yeah. Um, and then going back, and I do think because people were reacting that it happened to them as well, yes. and that women were harassing them. Um, I, I, I fully agree, but I was talking about my side of the story yeah. uh, because I think in, in in the gay scene, and that's also something we are not in the gay scene. Or I sometimes go to parties, but I cannot talk from. Uh, I didn't experience this, but I know for a fact and statistic that in the gay scene there is a lot, a lot, a lot of problematic behavior going on, yeah. rape going on, uh, spiking going on, but that is more something if we invite someone. Yeah, we uh, should definitely invite somebody that yeah. uh, knows more and more in the yeah. position to talk. Again, I'm, yeah, I, I'm maybe not in the position to talk, but I can just imagine that in an environment where more cam sex is happening, yeah. more masculine toxicity mating uh, processes are, are happening, there is probably more danger of an incident. Um, yeah. But I, I, I think we're not talking about incidents yeah. here. It's really problematic. Yeah. Uh, dark Phenomenons. rooms. Yeah. 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 Scary. Yeah. Very scary. Very yeah. scary. Yeah. I mean, I like I I've heard some stories, but I mean, like this is more from like um, I can say hardcore gay parties. I mean, like like I mean, Bergheim is a gay club. 
yeah. you know, in its essence. So like, like kind of being on the periphery of like seeing, seeing like these kind of subcultures within the culture, yeah. which are around, yeah, like, so I, I, I had um, a, a very good friend who I can say didn't survive Berlin, uh, had, had to leave from Turkey and was very into um, uh, Hard stuff. We, 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 weekend long um, uh, G and crystal meth fueled uh, gay orgies, you know, mm. days and days and days and days. And, days. and um, like I heard some of the like very dark stuff that happens that, you know, you, you wouldn't know about unless you were in this, in this. Um, yeah. But I mean, that's, this that's, is not, this is all, but that's all, part yeah. of the problem. Uh, I, I wrote it down now. Yeah, yeah. Is, Made it official. Um, <laughs> is that um, when there is also drug, drugs involved or intoxication, yes. um, that it's also very hard to talk about it because some things that we know that a victim um, and victim blaming, but also if you um, have an experience and you are intoxicated, it's also very hard for yourself. Like there is embarrassment, there is shame. Um, so we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it, period, but we don't talk about it also when we are intoxicated or maybe at first, you did go along with the game. You went to someone's house or you went to an orgy, but that doesn't mean that without consent, people can do stuff. And the boundaries are gone. Um, so, so that is also a, a big problem um, within, if, if we talk about things that happen in the rave scene. Um, when I... Uh, I, I, again, I'll say it uh, from my personal experience. Before I was uh, raving, I used to go a lot to more hip hop -y events, in, especially in Berlin. And one of the main reasons why I couldn't come back there was the, of course, the general uh, vibes where, where women are made into sex objects and men are just in a peacocky competition all the time. Uh, which I can all generalize in a just very uh, low vibrations, primal uh, atmosphere. I mean, but, but this, what you describe is not just hip hop. Certainly, I, I like, I'd say like the, the, the kind of hip hop culture um, like has at times we, like very much objectified women uh, yeah. in, in, its, in its approach and like uh, 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 message. Uh, but also like anything commercial, uh, any 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 anything, like even electronic music as well. Like, it, it, like and that's it, the it, sad it's, part. It's, the, what it, I'm what I'm trying to say is, I went away from that because I found the rave. Yeah, the rave invited me and showed me, hey, there's a magical world here, where everybody is the same, where uh, where women are treated nicely, where men are treated nicely, and there is no big competition and no chance of a fight. We can come back to the stabbing story in yeah. a second. And I thought, wow, this is the magical uh, world of party where I want to belong to, where, where, is the, where there's no danger, and even the primalness is being celebrated in a happy way. People look after each other, and it's a community, not a competition. But then, as you dig deeper, you see that this fairy tale world is nowadays, or for a long time already from now, from what I find out about the fetish scene, the punk scene and so on, this world is shooting its own leg. How? To my perspective. The overuse, again, it's my perspective and I don't want to be judgy, but the overuse of substances in a way that brings people back to the primalness of their character brings these communities back into the problematic you have in places like hip-hop scene and commercial parties. So there, let's talk about concrete uh, substances. Let's talk about alcohol, for example. On commercial and hip-hop parties, you have Percocets, you have MD, and you have basically alcohol. Alcohol makes people very what, primal. What, what is Percocet? Um, I'd say it's just painkillers. Ah, Codeine. Yeah. yeah. Scissor. Yeah, which I think is also just more uh, uh, dangerous for the users than the people around them. I think the most dangerous drug for the environment of the user is alcohol. Yeah. I think this is the drug uh, where you probably will find uh, most of the uh, physical conflicts happening, uh, sexual assaults and so on and so on. 
and uh, this is also the substance that that brings people into their i'll say dumbest form of primalness where men are men and uh, women are women you know i'm trying to over sexify everything right now but this is the vibes uh, Good I job. Got. yeah <laughs> 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 um so the danger I see in the techno scene or in the scene of electronic music is that the use of substances and the will to go completely hard into control loss, primalness, and hedonistic, uh, pure hedonistic behavior brings it back to the same place where it was when it was trying to escape uh, the ego, the primal, the primal games, the danger of uh, objectifying people. I see, I see it happening uh, in, 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 in this scene for the, for the last years. Probably my eyes weren't that open but when I came there. Is it maybe also because um, uh, maybe nothing really changed, but what changed is that um, especially we as female set more boundaries because I think uh, harassment was always has always been there. Always been always since been. Neanderthal times. Yeah, yeah. I just I just think that but it wasn't labeled harassment until. But that's what I mean. First of all, it wasn't labeled harassment, and second of all, we would never speak up because it was always our fault. Look what you were wearing. Uh, yeah, but you went with him to this dark corner, or it, it's victim blaming is a thing, and then shamed and so. Yeah, the whole Me Too movement and everything that happened afterwards um, made us more, uh, made us stronger and, and um, made us speak up. I, I think, I think the, 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 the stigma of victim blaming gets less with time, you know, and, and uh, like, because the fact that, um, her, that, that you could only define uh, a, a, a female as being harassed by her husband more recently. I mean, both like it was illegal for a wife to testify against her husband yeah. for, for a long time, you know? Um, so the fact that it's, it's less of a is, is, is it shows that people can speak up, you know? Uh, but only with time, more and more people are having the bravery to. And I guess kind of just going, like to, to go back to that, that and brief uh, discussion about the, 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 the dark and toxic gay, gay um, um, uh, behaving the gay scene. Yeah. Uh, I guess with, with the other societal stigmas around um, uh, homosexuality, there's even more of a stigma to speak up. So even more of a victim blaming um, acceptance within the scene, perhaps, uh, or kind of the, the more, I mean, this is, this is kind of diving into assumption here, but like, like the more, more dominant, uh, let's say toxic alphas in this scene are keeping quiet the more vulnerable abused ones, perhaps. And, and it's and it's also I think it's it's very hard uh, because we're talking still about this industry. It's it's again run by a majority of uh, uh, white men, and also they protect each other. And not even because they want to they want to protect um, someone who is molesting, but also they don't want to have the backlash. So we don't talk about it. Clubs they don't want to talk about it. Promoters. They want to keep their hands, so they kick someone out, but they don't make a statement. And when they make a statement, it's very undercover. And we just swab it under the rock. And Who, Who's we? Um, I, it's, 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 I don't think it's really okay to, to mention names in this, uh, where, from okay. out of my position. But I, I know now four promoters in Berlin and in Amsterdam that have... Uh, come across people in their team that are horrible, treated women horrible, and I'm even talking about rape. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and it's swept under the rock. We keep it quiet while you can just be open about it, talk about it. I even gave some advice, like have a phone number ready where women that uh, that face this. Uh, Nobody wants and, to and, carry and, that and responsibility. Men, men. Exactly. No one wants. Nobody to Nobody wants respons- to deal exactly. with it. I, uh, people think probably I'm already having a lot of ha- uh, or maybe headache my party with the is going to collapse. So, yeah. so it's a, like, like ho- <clears throat> if, if it would have been my party and something would have happened. I mean, there, your, your party has already collapsed, by the way. Yeah. Where, you know, you know, yeah. if if this is happening and not yeah. being dealt with. What is with? more dangerous for a promoter to take responsibility and to say, "Hey, this happened at my party," or to ignore it and to say, oh, "It's only rumors to ruin my name." 
you know. Yeah. So uh, promoters are really uh, like uh, stuck in the corner here, but still the right thing to do probably would be to speak up about anything that happened there and maybe by by doing this, creating a more Awareness. feeling of safety, safety. Yeah. For, for future guests. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it could be simple. You could, you could, you could even have a team ready uh, in the background that uh, women that got uh, harassed, or f or you don't even know of, but have a phone number ready. If something happened, uh, call us or send us an email, and it's going to be anonymous. And we have a team ready to guide you, and we have numbers ready where you can call or send an email to that can help you. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I want I want to come back again to this uh, to this comparison that I that, that I made to to the hip hop scene or to the commercial scene. Techno is uh, it's inevitable now that <coughs> techno is the mainstream. Electronic music is the mainstream for many years now. Urban is still coming bigger. back and forth. Huh? Urban is still bigger in Holland though. Urban. Yeah. Hip hop, so hip hop, urban is. is so, so hip hop, urban is. Hip hop is an industry, yeah, is bigger, yeah, it's bigger. still making more yeah. money. It's, but uh, if we're talking about, if we're, if we're watching techno as a, just as a graph, as a wave, yeah. it, had a, it had its highlight end of the 90s, then it went down yeah. again, then it went mainstream again, big stage again, and now it's being celebrated again, especially hard and fast techno. Um, you think. The commercialization of uh, techno rises probably the probability of uh, of it becoming the same as hip hop as urban music in terms of the more people you bring in, the more probability of toxicity, the more probability of uneducated uh, 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 in uh, inevitability. In inevitability. Yeah, yeah. it's, okay. in it's inevitable. How can you how can you guarantee safeness if you have 20,000 people? Mm -hmm. it is, it's, an, it's a numbers thing, you know? Um, and, and like, so, so even in these kind of smaller communities and smaller parties, <coughs> you still cannot guarantee safety 100%. It's impossible. Yeah, it's impossible. But you can guarantee it 95. And that num but that number diminishes with the scale of event, no matter what, because, you know, if, if there's a less than 5% chance of something happening and you've got 100 people then you're pretty good you've got 5000 it's a, it you know like the, and, and there aren't enough um enough people who are uh let's say let's say um not uh, who are, are appreciating it, appreciating it because it's mainstream because mm. it's popular um are people that may not be appreciating what it could be because they're too busy with their own agenda of yeah I'm just afraid, it's the, again, the little boy raver in me that still believes in the magic of, uh, of, uh, of techno as not as a music, but as a, as a worldview. I'm afraid that the techno world or the world of electronic music does not practice what it preaches. And I'm afraid that uh, because of m many factors, as I said, for me, it's certain substances and certain vibes and certain selling points of certain parties. <coughs> we are stepping back. We are going exactly into the direction of the world we were trying to give an alternative to. Uh, many say in Germany that the clubs or the club culture is the attempt to create an alternative society with new rules and new freedom. And I think the more popular it gets and the more appropriated the terms of techno and sexual positivity and so on, the more appropriated they get, the nearer we get into this old world we were trying that, to get uh, escape from. But that is exactly, I think we spoke about it in the previous podcast, I think that's the beauty of um, underground becoming commercial yeah. and then uh, we go back into the underground again. Yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's going to be beautiful <coughs> and then it filters itself out again. So... Um, I, I had a really nice conversation uh, with um, uh, JP, Social Vlad, yeah. and another friend of ours, Daniel. You met you met Daniel um, when you told him your name was actually Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, yes, yes. And we were talking um, about uh, this this phrase, uh, underground and commercial, and trying to de trying to define. Okay, at what point does underground become commercial? When would you label something commercial? And um, like. I was, I was wondering, because you use this phrase, like, how yeah. would you define the differences between these two words? 
So I, I, so I have a theory I, uh, is that um, um, when you start something on the ground, it is never an intention. Like, oh my God, I'm going to be so cool. I'm going to start something on the ground. You, you're going to do something different. Uh, you're going to create a soap shower. <laughs> <laughs> And then, Underground soap shows. and then you find out that it's actually you have something. Mm. People like it. People need it as well. Um, people want to be involved. So the first generation of something new um, is very welcoming. It's very mm. open. Um, they want to share. Um, then comes in the second generation, uh -huh. and then um, they are going to exclude. Um, mm. I don't want to sit with you or you can't sit here. I love that phrase. You can't sit here because they are very happy that they're in uh, and they're, gonna, they're, they're going to exclude. And, uh, and then the third generation, they want to be there because what better than to be somewhere where you hype. got... Yeah, hype. I, I, I didn't get in. Then, then we're going to try with 20 of us to get in. Um, Best and method. Then, and then <laughs> we're going to have a line, right? Something happened with you last weekend to have a little bridge. <laughs> yes. Um, should I? Should I? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. So um, a friend of mine was uh, part of the technical uh, organizational part of uh, Multisex. He invited us uh, to come and uh, see the event at uh, Watergate. And I was uh, intrigued because uh, the last Multisex I went to was... Um, four years ago at Aden. How, how old is the party? I think the, from what I heard, it's already nine, nine years. Okay, wow. okay, so okay. Everybody thinks like it's a new, it's a new phenomenon. The I, 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 I only heard of it in recent, recent exactly. years. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It, it, it definitely existed and had an existing community already during uh, COVID, first openings of the clubs, it was already an existing community. Um, if I can describe it in two words, it was a nice, housey, more adult uh, environment uh, than you would normally see at uh, Aden, like average age, I would say uh, next to 30. And uh, Boris uh, was playing at Aden. So I already understood at that time, three, four years ago, that this party has uh, Taste and uh, probably also connections. If they bring taste boys and to, connections, huh? taste and connections. Yeah, I, and I think uh, this comes also with the experience. I also met the boys, uh, the two uh, founders in K41. I had just a short chat with them and saw that uh, they they, uh, they have uh, they have they understand what they're doing. We also also talked about it last time. And since then, I haven't been. Since like three, four years, uh, multi-sex day, and I haven't been. And I see the hype going on. I see the, the content evolving. I see the community, of course, also on social media. Without creating a lot of social media, they're still growing. Yeah. So something is speaking for, yeah. for itself. Yeah. And uh, so our friend invited us to, to join. We wanted to go on the first day. It's like two days party at Watergate. And uh, we were just, I don't know, killed from, from the weekend or just didn't have the, the power to go. And we went on the second day. And we come to the door, we have uh, four skip lists, and the security guard is like, uh, no, we're only, getting, uh, we're only letting uh, guest lists uh, inside. The party is uh, kind of closed already. And that's not the first time I hear about it. It's already like the second or third time I hear that the, the, the second day of, of multisex is like a closed day where they already let enough people in, and uh, the, vibe is, uh, the vibe is closed. <laughs> you okay. know, uh, so yeah, so I didn't, I didn't get a chance uh, to 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 see what was going on on the inside, but uh, the the reactions I get every time is like, uh, wow, the party with the prettiest people in Berlin and uh, the best vibes, and also the lineups are never announced, uh, which which is a, a common a common thing now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but skip but, list does yeah. not guarantee entry. But I did get a photo no. of the lineup uh, yeah. from our guy on the inside, and the lineup was of course immaculate, like Ryan Elliott and yeah. Marcel Detman playing. And, and and I heard Marcel Detman uh -huh. <laughs> killed it. <laughs> they also played at B2B afterwards. So it was yeah. Ryan, Ryan, Marcel, and then together. Yeah. So Beautiful it's decision. One, one, one stage, one, one room. Yeah. One stage, one room. The other room is like chill, uh, out. chill out. Yeah. And uh, I think they, they are also able, with their community and their vibes, they are able to flip a place like Watergate. Because yeah. we were in Watergate, uh, our friend played the set there a night before. And it was cute, but it was Watergate. It was cute, but it was Watergate. Yeah, it was Watergate. You still you, Watergate gives you very uh, often the feeling of a bar of a hotel, uh, like a, a lobby bar at the hotel. Lobby. Very clean, very like people in suits. 
some some tourists, some um, some uh, white collar uh, uh, dudes. Yeah, but it depends. But, on the but they had they had guest list. They had guest list. Though, yeah. Mostly depends on Pomora, but ninety nine percent of the event and <laughs> events in Watergate, except for a multisex and once or twice BCCO, <coughs> were the same. Watergate is pretty much the same. Watergate is an institution. It uh, lives uh, longer than Berkeley. Yeah, we did uh, one there. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, last month. Yeah. Yes, the community. Yeah. And how was it? But it was very on the cover because it was also a bit of a tryout. Uh -huh. um, I, 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 unfortunately, I was sick in my hotel ro room for four days, so oh. I was I couldn't be there. But I heard it was amazing. If you use it as a venue, yeah. yeah. There is a reason this place exists. It it sits on the best corner in Berlin. You have the bridge Oberbaumbrücke. Yeah. You have the water, the glass uh, uh, walls. Even as, as as we said, the second floor with a with a terrible sound, uh, yeah, for the protocol, Watergate uh, should invest in the terrible sound of the second floor. But the first uh, floor is legendary, and if you use it as a venue, and if you come with your own magic, your own magic box, so to say, because your people, your community is the magic, you can. I'm more than sure that if tomorrow an Esther Comuni uh, rave under the bridge happens in Berlin, it would be the best rave under the bridge that Berlin has uh, seen in the last uh, months or years, you know, because you bring special people. Yeah. And the, the, this is the magic. Have you been you to bring. an under the bridge rave in Berlin? Huh? Have you I, been to an under the bridge rave? I would love an under the bridge rave air community in Berlin, though. I've been to a, to a, a <laughs> above I, 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 a bridge I, I, uh, rave in Berlin. It was not bad. I, 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 don't, I don't think the police do the Gologa. I, I don't. The, I don't <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I mean that, 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 that that's that's not true. They used to, but like, I mean now, if you have like so, first uh, of May in Berlin, yeah. is well, there's is, a lot of May, light May, May, in May Day well. in Berlin yeah. is, it, it, historically is is a is a very wild day in in all kinds of ways. Um, but since I think it was 2019. Just before COVID, like Skalitzerstrasse, uh, which is like the kind of main center point normally, yeah. uh, where there used to be you know, big name DJs just playing in fucking coffee shops just down the road, a uh, street full of people. Now the 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 Ordnungsamt, with support of the police, uh, uh, the Polizei are like uh, handing out big fines to anyone who's still doing oh, amplified wow. music. So all of a sudden, like the kind of they are the promoters now. They make like, the money you now. will listen to our music now. <laughs> 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 so, so yeah, like I, th I think, I think, and then with with all the um, uh, during COVID, when there were so many uh, underground illegal um, raves happening, bunker parties, yeah. uh, banner buildings, uh, apartments, Vegas, um, there was a lot more kind of um, hmm, okay. This this is an interesting place for a party because pe people were like turning up to like the the, the last the last S bahn stop on the end of the line <laughs> in huge groups of like party dress people, uh, someone notices a call to police saying, hey, there's a whole bunch of uh, people here. Da, da, da. Like after a while, less and less, less and less places were secret, you know? So I, I think, I think I'd, I'd say good luck finding a, a good under the spot, uh, under the bridge under the spot. Bridge. That's where, the biggest where, yeah. struggle right now in Berlin for many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, per, yeah but for us that would not now. be possible. We're not from Berlin, so it would be really hard to do an illegal one. If, if you're not from a country, yeah. uh, in Holland, we know the rules, we know how to... Yeah, you feel comfortable with the alleys. Maneuver, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's try maybe to, to get back to this uh, difference between underground and commercial. It's for me one of the most fascinating uh, themes or questions, not even, not even in, in our niche or in our uh, subculture, just in general in the music industry. What do you think uh, happens uh, to a sound, to a certain sound or to a certain um, kind of music that makes it go through the gateway of underground to commercial i, I uh, first of all i think it's very difficult um if uh, from a from a promoter or a dj perspective if you want to make a living out of it hmm. and you want to make a good living out of it it's almost impossible to stay underground because, because there you is have to appeal to a wider audience no, there, yeah but it's more there is no money made in underground that, that's, that's what i mean yeah that's what i mean it's not that it's that easy to appeal to a wider audience very often people say you know this artist became commercial because he makes a product that everybody likes for no, many no, no, it's the other way around yes it's it's doing something that the bigger so audience good. like yes um, so I, these are what we talked about before as well. Like, yeah. like for, for me, for me, like underground um, is not driven by um, uh, profit; it's driven by passion. 
Yeah, but it's so that's in marketing because I do marketing communication for Radion, as you all know by now. Um, there are two beautiful products. I think I mentioned it. I, I'm not sure. One of them, and it's really a term. It's called the Dr. Martin effect, because we all think that Dr. Martin is very underground, yes. while they're a money making machine. And I think Bergheim is also a good example mm. of a club that maintains its underground status while it's a money-making machine. So I think it is possible. Mm -hmm. um, Does Berg, is Berg on underground still? I, maybe now not, but... Yes, I mean, and, no. yes like, and no. Like, yes and no. So, so let, let, yes let, let's no. talk about that, because, because like... Commercial things, Berg is very underground. I think it's a commercial project maintaining its underground color yeah. uh, and still to many people in the world, completely unknown. I think people... Yeah. People like us, I would say, know personas like, like Ben Klock. But for 99% of the world c consumer uh, audience, don't know who that is. Okay, but but so say, say but 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 yeah. okay, but 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 say but say you, you, like techno as a as a concept as a genre, like within that there is a a, a, a huge amount of people that that haven't been to Bergheim, for example, but know of it. Okay, so if but we I think that makes it also on the ground. It's that also the exclusion part. Um, it's it's very tough to, to get in. Um, so it's still which a, which it, you it, said by the way makes an underground slowly to a commercial thing. If you start excluding, of, of, co of course, you know? of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, or it creates a hype, and then yeah. the hype becomes hashtag but, the, the you know TikTok. Uh, uh, what's the word? Um, how to get into Bergheim videos? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which is, they, yeah like, because also people think hashtag TikTok such a boomer thing to say. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was long. I don't know if you hashtag noticed. TikTok. I don't know if you noticed <laughs> how, how how long that hashtag was. It was it was about two <laughs> sentences. So I, I, th I think you would only get one viewer, which is perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's an underground hashtag, actually. <laughs> Yeah. Well. Um, wait. Um, where, where, where where were we? It's um, Bergheim commercial. I I, I think um, that's all. That 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 could be because what happened to you uh, at Multisex, um, people also commented things on Reddit about Eerste Communie. Um, I remember it was not even full, and they closed the doors, and then yeah. they think it's a marketing tool or something. Yeah. Definitely not. There was Devious One playing and the vibe was insane and we were indeed not full. But the vibe was so good and it was just two more DJs left. And we decided to close the doors because new energy that comes in can it it can be good but but it can also you don't want to take the risk down. you don't want to take the risk and for us it's not about the money so we decided to close the doors i think it's a beautiful decision if you know that more or less the costs are covered or at least your expectations of uh, of well uh, we we don't even think then if the costs are covered it's just yeah. we look inside and we're like no this is in, and and what happened when we closed the doors was magical yeah. So is, I, I love everything you're saying right now because th this is exact, exact sentiment I've had when I've been doing selection also. And there's been like, say, say the, cap the capacity is 80% full, but the vibe is flawless. Then every single new prospect is a bigger threat because I'm not creating something. I've created it, in fact. Yeah. And now this is a risk. So and let, so this is when it's like, right, guest list only. That can be... It, that can be if, if, for example, you check the numbers, like, shit, we didn't even get the break-even point. We need 20 more people in. And that's where... That's, but that's a, it has to be 20 of the right that's people. That's a privilege. Yeah. As, as a promoter, I just say, that's a huge privilege to have that courage or freedom to say... I'm going into minus now because I want to keep this magic going. Which is also, in terms of uh, commercial long-term planning, not bad. Because either if we see it as a, as a promotional move or not, this move they're doing in multisex will work for them. Exactly. Exactly like the door of Berkheim works for Berkheim. At the beginning, it wasn't we're going to be selective at the door because we want to create a hype about who, what's going on there. That was but not the, now yeah, yeah. it has yeah. already become. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, if a product is so good, you don't, you, you don't want to tell the whole world about it. 
at the end, uh, everybody will want to find yeah. out what's going on there. You know, everybody will want to, to, yeah. to try this secret. And uh, Dr. Martens or on the hashtag how to get into Bergheim list. <laughs> it's, a, it's a list now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's just a list. Like, yeah. Okay. Well, ha I, actually, Dr. Dr. Martens and Bergheim do paid partnership. Yeah, but first of all, to get in, Dr. Yeah. Martens. But yeah. it's the same if, if you look at uh, big Worst rage, shoes to even. rave with, by the way. I think so. Again, uh, yeah, Worst shoes to rave with. Uh, New depends. Balance, I, I, I mean, it Essex. It depends. I have my old school uh, Dr. Martens. Yeah. They're pretty... Uh, I have also a new model where yeah. the sole is like more light and everything. Yeah. But still, if your plan is to army march the whole night, no. okay, okay. Yeah. But I'm really... Well, it takes jumping. her off anyway. She takes, she takes her shoes off in Burgoyne. No, <laughs> yes, by the way, what, you take what? your shoes off. She wears so. Doc Martens too, Burgoyne. I have my shoes off now as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have my shoes off. Nice. But... Um, um, uh, about uh, no, I, Dr. I, I, yeah, oh, no, that's what I wanted to say. So it's also with uh, uh, fashion. So if you go to Rotterdam Rave or you go to Verknipt, they all look like uh, Bergheim people from 10 years ago. Yeah. So they are in while echo, before echo. it was like jeans, sneakers, uh, shirts, and now they look even. Uh, that's some stupid if I say even, but also all the men, they wear their harnesses and uh, it's all copied from, from what they saw in line of Bergheim because they've never been in Bergheim. Mm. So, um, and, and it's also not what Bergheim people dress uh, into now. Yes. So it also becomes a fashion statement. And, um, but I think uh, so, uh, um, um, on the ground or uh, culture, it's, it, I, I always say it's not a fashion statement, but in a way it, it, it is because, um, and, and I don't also don't think it's really bad mm -hmm. that that there that there are uh, kinds of um, outside features you see that then you know you're part of a group. Mm -hmm. I love the whole gobber aesthetics. It's it's amazing and and it's iconic right now. Yes. Australian Nikes, not New Balance. But like Gab was, Gab uh, yeah. was growing recently as well. As yeah, well. Gabber is having also because of TikTok. But the hardcore real Gabbers are not a fan like us. Or I, I don't so, like so, TikTok. So, so, so what, what, we, so what we see as people in the techno scene of the Gabber scene generally yeah. is going to be the commercial Gabber. Yeah. The commercial Gabber scene. You know, as a dancer or as a choreograph, I find it very hard to... I can appreciate uh, the style of dance of GABA, but I, I want to see a Dash Techno team, GABA. I want to see Dash Techno team. It could does. happen. It could happen with the right with the right GABA uh, performer, GABA with takeover. the right persona. <laughs> as a GABA. This is an open invitation to the best GABA performers uh, of Holland to, to come and participate in the Techno team special. Oh, Mi Michaela, Michaela, you know Michaela? She's in Rotterdam now. She like. The girl, the Israeli, Israeli girl, girl who, yeah, yeah I, I know her. Yeah, we, she, we, we were trying to plan a techno team someday, but uh, it didn't happen. Yeah, uh, yes, it's a yes. shout out. <laughs> yeah, I know a couple of dancers, they also <laughs> dance for Scooter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is there something wrong with Scooter? Which is a legend, yeah, legend, legend. Like 20 <laughs> years ago, it was horrible, but now it's amazing. So same song 20 years later. <laughs> <laughs> How so, do you do that? <laughs> I, I, I have to be, again, honest. Why am I mentioning uh, me uh, choreographing, blah, blah. I uh, follow the culture of dance for years and I follow uh, dance uh, traditions and dance phenomenons. I watch German dance floors and I kind of know how to analyze uh, I don't want to say people as sheep, but uh, definitely mm -hmm. dancing masses. Yeah. And I see dancing trends, especially on German dance floors, changing. Again, I don't want us to be too critical now about uh, who's the German uh, consumer of dance and how, how, how the, the German raver matches himself or herself to trends. But I definitely uh, can analyze uh, dance or movement from a little bit of a different perspective. And I can say that GABA dance is a style that was driven not only by the music itself, but also by the consumption of the specific drugs that were used yeah. at that time. Yeah. And many of the gestures of the... The crampings. The of, crampings, yeah. the dance movements are 
I'm sorry. Uh, Amphetamine related. So, yeah, <laughs> giving me super heavy junkie vibes. Yeah. yeah, and I'm. It's okay. It you. It was. It's. It's super funny <laughs> it, to watch but, those old films. But and, that's even more. Well, okay. I, now well, I love films. it even more because it's so entwined into. But 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 also like like. When you describe this, I know exactly what you mean because I've seen on multiple occasions in my life people who've taken yeah. too much. But but, uh, th but this is the thing because. But this is also the bad like, guy move. No, but, 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 I'm probably not showing it right. I, 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 I would stand there. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I haven't seen someone do the hacker sitting down. <laughs> but 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 like like um, I, I I'm impressed by the level of proprioception. Uh, and balance you have to have to do yeah. what, to do what they're doing so fast to the I music. I can't. So, so like, you mean the clap? So like 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 I have like, I haven't seen junkies just in the street just doing this jump and clap like this. You know? Yeah. Because because it, it, this is no, it's very specific consumption. It's also pe uh, people that uh, that created that uh, I would say already traditional dance. They were not only junkies. They were people with uh, high body uh, control and uh, being on so much substance and dancing so fast and creating a choreography that would 20, 30 years later would become a dancing contest. Yeah, you need some skills for that. But still, the problem, the, just the problem that I have is that there are like whole events and whole subject culture created by something that was a side effect. You know, there but was I think it's it, it, I think it's deeper than that. I, 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 I'm not sure because th that is not something that I and, and I was there when it started. But but um, if even a ballet like Ballet Marseille, uh, um, they have a piece based on hard style and gubber, mm -hmm. um, then technically there must be something they did right with their dance. Right. I'm not a dancer. You're a dancer. There is a. Uh it's uh, a harmony uh, between this movement and this type of music. It matches. This is how the body of the consumer of this specific substance and this specific music, there's, there's a harmony. It, the, the body speaks this music. Yeah. I wouldn't dance other way. And, and it's also, if, have you ever been to a full-on GABA party from the beginning until the I, end? I've never been to a half-on uh, GABA party. Okay, <laughs> because it's also not even possible to dance this way all it's the not, time. They, they make movements, they yes. stop, they, they breathe. They pause, 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 they, and then yeah, you go solo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because it's, it's, oh, it's impossible. Which is also one of the big minuses for me, because I see a rave as a long-going ritual, and I think that r just mathematically and uh, physiologically, there is nothing better than the average of 135 to 140. Because physically, this is what so we are... the best tempo to... If it's 120... Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Explain, explain. Is physically the best tempo how? What do you mean? Okay, so we have a certain heartbeat. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, and it's probably like, there is, a, there is an average between all of us that would be more or less the same number. None of us is like uh, heart beating the half or the double. Yeah? So 120 is our heartbeat. This is why you feel the most comfortable to stomp in place when you hear so half if it's too low, you can get anxious. When it's too high, you get exhausted. Not only anxious, uh, tired, just tired. Yeah. And um, if, 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 let's say, let's take for example. Uh, so wait, wait. Do, no, do, do, I mean anxious. Like, <laughs> where is the drop? Yes, that's yes. what no, I mean. But, but, where but like, where you, is you, the ritual you, happening? You, you, yeah, where is the ritual? You, you talked about like, um, uh, like there, there is a certain optimal yes. uh, uh, BPM. Yes. Uh, to correlate with your that average you heart rate, stand, which is the basic of techno. However, however, so say you have someone not pointing fingers at any genres who's yeah. taken a huge amount of stimulants, yes. then their resting heart rate is going to be X higher. So they need a higher BPM to be... No, but, sti the, but it's not but sustainable. But even them, exactly. It's, it's not, not sustainable. sustainable. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. We're, let's, let's imagine that there are no substances in the game. Yeah. Just for a second. Because substances at the end they work as doping. Enter. They work as doping. They yeah. can increase the results of your physical activity, but they, at the end, they, it's, a, it's a lie. We, we lie to our bodies. <laughs> yeah? we, are not, we are not super people, and uh, we, we have our uh, genetics and natural capabilities. So if we just take, let's take substances just for a second out of the game. Yeah. A person can go on for 12 hours in a tempo that is approximately, I don't want to call out yeah. specific numbers, but approximately 135 to 140. And this is at the... Slightly higher than your... Yes, slightly higher. 
that's why it's also driving. Yeah. Because it's more than your yeah. heartbeat. So you, your body, your body uh, uh, can adjust to it. So it's. But I must. Agree. It's aerobic. It's just basic aerobic movement. Yeah. But I must agree because that's also because we are talking about styles of dancing. Because the the, the um, if you see the Eerste Communie movie that went viral under the bridge, um, it's. It, it looks like we all dance the same. Yes. Which that you share a frequency. A frequency. That was the moment, by the way. But I, but I think that is what happens when you become one. Um, you even, need average. Yeah, yeah. There is no possibility to bring so many, so many different people with different hearing, different background of understanding sound under one common ground of frequency without mathematically searching for this average. Yeah. And there is a reason why techno is And I think that's also why the video went viral. Yes. Because everything at that moment... Also for the observer of the, the video. For the observer of the video. Yeah. Everything at that moment was perfect. Synchronized. Yes. Synchronized and someone captured it. And then put it online. So, so it, because it seems like we were dancing like this all the fucking time, yeah. which it, it was a fucking rave. We went all over the place. Yeah. So, but, then uh, was but, one but it was it's a, um, it was a magical moment. Yeah. Also in the psy trance scene, and also yeah. in other in other sub uh, cultures and genres, this these magical numbers of one forty, again approximately. Well, for psy trance, psy trance uh, is higher, no? Actually, no. Huh? You have psy trance that goes for one twenty. And you have Psytrance that goes for 150. But our physique is still the same. But I would love to do a party where we put all these BPM and frequencies uh, together. A, a journey, like like optimalize. But this is what we are uh, moving to. This is, I think, where the world, world of electronic music is moving to. We will have so many cross genres in five to ten years that we are probably all going to dance to one frequency. You have now already such complex, beautiful tracks that combine tech house, techno, EBM, uh, even rock house in one. Yeah. And everybody hears out what yeah. they want, want it to, to be. Exactly. You know? It sounds like an AI-generated uh, concept. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's very complex. To I think AI will not be able to create something no. like that. I'm, because I, I, I agree. you need asymmetry. Yeah. You need the understanding of body movement in order to put two grooves that are that have completely nothing to do with each other it, it re always reminds me of my favorite track so electric by devious one is my favorite track this is my this is for me the definition of techno and why because in this track in a very simplistic way a three count rhythm and a four count rhythm get on each other get off each other and get on back on each other uh, electric but the electric. one i, I, will I, check I played it, it on love for it, uh, last, it last year I, I hope that it it, it gets into the snippet uh, of... Uh, <laughs> I know, I hope I so. Hope. Um, <laughs> what's yours, Rob? All-time favorite track? Yeah. It changes, it changes. Uh, yeah, but with me the same, it changes, but I have one... For me, electric is my Bible, yeah, you know? It, yeah. This is my, what... Uh, of course, you can, you can say Sub-Zero by Ben Clock, but this is already like uh, the shopping mall of, 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 of techno, you know? Everybody is uh, walking into this track back and forth. Ah, this is techno. But, but electric was the one that, that uh, got my ear, and yeah. I always come back to this one when we sit, for example, with Amit and, uh, and try to create something new. We use this as a reference of how geniusly oh, simple wow. a track can be. Yeah. And still how complex, you know, and uh, I think this is what makes techno exactly the golden middle of music. I'm sorry for making this, um, I'm not sorry, I mean, I mean, sorry if it sounds too much of a bombastic uh, uh, statement, but I think there is a reason why techno is the middle of music right now or the middle of electronic of music. Of electronic music. It sits in the middle. But it's logical, right? Because yes. it's the start. Yes. Oh, uh, it's, yeah. the it's the primal way yeah. of listening and dancing to sound. Yeah. I think that when people were the same Neanderthals that uh, didn't know how to flirt with the one each other, when they were mating with each other around fire, they were basing their sound on lows, mids, and highs. And the rhythm was probably, I'm guessing, not very much so, different than 135 to 140. So I'm <laughs> Neanderthal a living in 135 <laughs> BPM. That's because it's boom, 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 boom. If you listen to old... Uh, yeah, old I listen to mantras. Yeah. And 
it doesn't matter if you listen to a mantra from Scandinavia or you listen to a mantra <coughs> yes. from an indigenous um, culture, um, the, the basis of the mantras are, yes. all of, are from India. Yes. They're all the same. Yes. Um, and is, this, is, this is chanting, is it? Yeah, it's chanting. Yeah. But, but, but is, it, is it noises or is, is it words? I, uh, you have different kind of mantras. I always want the one with words uh, because I love to sing along because that also does, does something to the brain. I googled the, the, the lyrics, which is not good because they say you should just Here. mumble. Uh, but but it's 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 the, for me that's very hard and I love to Google, so I Google the words and I try to mimic, but it helped me through the pandemic. Uh, did, uh, did you translate what you were saying? Yeah, yeah, CBD and THC oil and CBD THC. To CB. Help me to the pandemic. <laughs> Also a bit of 3MMC, but that was after the mantra. A lot of, a lot of letters. What are those random letters you're talking about? Yeah, that's... Um, what is it? Algebra. Yes. We forgot yeah. the big three. Yeah, the big three. LSD. Like, I, I, I need to, my LSD, no. No? No, no, no. no. But LSD. I wanna, Isa. Isa. No, sorry. This Never. Is, uh, I'm not into psychedelics. All right, tough love time. Tough, tough love. <laughs> Whoa. We're, it, it, I didn't even mention my say, favorite say, track. Say, and we're save going something. Into save, save something for the third, the third, the, the trilogy. Yeah, huh? I'm. Uh, I, I, I did open to CB. I'm. Uh, okay, so to CB. I didn't is, like it. Okay, I totally understand why you didn't like to CB because it's a an, uh, attempt to uh, reconstruct uh, artificially something that is way more, way deeper than uh, than chemicals. So the thing is, is well that put. I still like it, but well put. <laughs> you like to CB. Um, it's funny. So, so, so for me, like, um, I am rarely historically taking psychedelic uh, substances and parties. Not because I don't like psychedelics, but because it distracts me from what I'm there for. Exactly. And I think there's a much more uh, noble way of using them. I can say. Um, but um, if it's if it's like so, two CB is very mild. I find, and and it's more it depends like depends on the amount. Um, amount. And it depends on one's tolerance because I know some people yeah. are very affected by it, and me not so. For me, it feels like putting a pair of uh, coloured lenses on, just like. It's just like a yeah, and completely losing control no, of your I, body. The, the, <laughs> no, 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 not really. Uh -huh. No, but that's the thing that I I I I'm a control freak. So um, if I see things that are not there, I know that they are not there, and that freaks me out. I'm like, I know that there are no raindrops on my on my windows because it is fucking not raining. And then I see the raindrops, and other people are like, oh my god, raindrops! And I'm like freaking out. I'm like fucking hell. Yeah. And it's not that I'm going into a bad trip, yeah. but it's just my. There is no side. for the protocol. There are no bad trips. Okay, yeah, I've never done such every trip so is I a learning. Know. Yeah, that's <laughs> the <said> Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, we we, we can Voila. talk about it eternally, but just. Um, but I would love to to be in the right setting. Yes, because I think I think I should tr tr try it uh, once. I, I mean, it, it, but but, you, but it's it's like it's like if if and you and then talk about it afterwards. If yes. you, if you if you are worried about or scared about having a bad oh, experience, then even, then no, you are no, likely no. more likely I, to. You know, I'm is, I'm not worried at all about. Uh, I think you're more able to let go. Uh, even mm. even even a bad trip. I I would I, I, one of my most comfortable moments when taking drugs is when it's all worn out and you get like this and you stand <laughs> in the line and it's gonna take an hour and you know that it, that actually you should have stood in line an hour before and that uncomfortable feeling I love it so no I'm not worried about it <laughs> <laughs> such a mind to say <laughs> yeah you know folks he loves <laughs> everyone, the uncomfort. He loves e the uncomfort everyone knows what I mean right yes yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Reward at the end. yeah exactly it's the yeah. reward at the end life, yeah. life begins at the end of the comfort zone as they say <laughs> Yeah, we were we were uh, talking also about uh, the example of standing in line in Berka and why this uncomfortable feeling comes up, uh, and we even called it for a second the death and rebirth of your ego because it doesn't matter how deep you are in the scene and how cool you are when you approach that door, there is <laughs> yeah. a certain amount of uncertainty which kind of kills your ego and lets you re uh, be reborn yeah, again. Also, you never know who you end up yes, with. Yes, yes, it, it could be. <clears throat> Uh, and also now there is, uh, we talk about, uh, uh, sorry, uh, sorry people, I am 
open. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm not going to mention any names. But we also talk about now if we are in the toilet with certain people that yeah. we are not taking certain kinds of drugs because people might have an opinion uh -huh. because you're using that drugs. I'm not that kind of person, though. <laughs> but uh, set and setting. That, Set and setting is all, is always very very important. I would I would never try something new or no. go go extreme without knowing today. I already did a couple of times, but today after <laughs> knowing that I that your setting your surroundings plays such a such an important uh, role, you don't want to go into that. You don't want to lose control in, the, in an environment where where you have no cushions. You know? I think I think I think uh, one of the beautiful things about psychedelics, uh, if you can uh, submit to the experience, um, of course, this is like if you're taking a, 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 a something big enough to have a proper trip, as opposed to microdosing, which is very popular, especially in the party scene too. Um, is 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 uh, your your you have the uh, opportunity to redefine what control actually looks like and how you define it, because mm -hmm. you you're allowed to realize, oh. The things I was worried about losing control ab about are things I was not even on con in control of, you know. And, and, and this feeling of uh, vulnerability through control loss is actually very empowering because you're like, oh, I never had control, and actually, it doesn't matter. But the thing is, because of course you don't have control, and because I'm saying I'm a control freak, but when I have my one woman show, when I take GHB, I don't have any control, and I think I have control. Although I know I don't have control, still I think Love I have control. Love the one woman show. <laughs> no, 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 that no. used to be my, my uh, <laughs> constant Sisyphus uh, um, trip. I was, I was having Mark was every time like, oh, this is... Uh, I, don't even, I don't this. even mind who the audience is. <laughs> I just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, isn't it? Isn't what we're doing uh, in clubs or in in our uh, hedonistic, escapistic, uh, free culture? Isn't it always playing with the border of losing control? Yes. Isn't it always so. about the walking on the thin line of yes. almost falling? Yes. And like testing ourselves of how capable are we? You know. How many people in the rave scene suffer from ADHD? It's the constant search for dopamine. Uh, so I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, 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 think I was I, diagnosed I think with something else, but I'm pretty sure I'd yeah. say I, 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 I think, I think, I, like, I, I think most people that I, I develop connections with do have ADHD somehow because uh, yeah. it, it's, it's where these constant uh, new ideas are coming from. Yeah. I think novelties. I think we're, we're all the search for novelties. Uh, yeah, it's basically, it comes down to yeah. dopamine. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. What what was your question, Ben? You I, like, oh, like that's what I, I I wanted to say about psychedelics. That I do think uh, that um, psychedelics are really not a, a, a party drug. I agree to disagree completely, um, I'll, and I can tell you why it's to my opinion that way. You can split. Uh, I I like to split uh, substances into powders. And LSD. <laughs> 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 and also, people, a lot of people consider ketamine. And of course, weed is in the same category as LSD. It's completely out of the category of, uh, of powders. So if we split those two worlds... Um, so sorry, but you can just do like psychoactive and powders then, no? You can, you, you, can, you can mix everything. You, everything is psychoactive, by the way. Uh, right? uh, Coffee sorry, is psychoactive. Psych psychedelic, psychedelic, yeah. psychedelic. What I think is that psychedelics do not lie to your physique. What does that mean? If you are on a psychedelic substance, only curiosity and the interest of what is going to happen next will fuel your knees and feet and body. If you're on a powder, mm. which I... I include uh, GHB uh, into the world of powders. Yeah. I'll explain also why. But um, if you're there, you are able to, to lie to your body and ask for, from your, your body for more, more than your body is willing to give you. Can we, can we instead of powders for this um, example, use the word stimulants then? 
Because, because, because you, I can I, see LSD I, as a I, stimulant I, as well, but I but, agree but, with what but, you're but, saying. But, Stimulants. Okay, okay. So, so, so LSD and ketamine is also not a so, stimulant, yeah, but a yeah, powder. But LSD and ketamine can be stimulants in terms of they're stimulating mental activity, which yes. can be arousing physically because you're yeah. more alert. Um, however, it's not going to increase your heart rate. For example, it's yeah. like, like I, LSD or magic mushrooms. It's not going to um, have a a, 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 a stimulant adrenaline fueled effect on your central nervous system in the same yeah. way as any of the other uh, these other stimulants. But I just think that um, in terms, like from the perspective of a raver, if I need uh doping for my body for my for my energy that is not dependent on my set and setting uh i would i would go for for stimulants of a certain kind if i am ready to give away and to let my body do the decisions for me then i would go for psychedelics because because then i am Mm, I'll start again. I want to be more co concrete about it. I think that the, the consumption of stimulants is taking the max and even more than the max from your body, even if you don't have these resources on that day and time. And the approach of psychedelics is yeah. to, to say, okay, the way I, I am today, this is how it's going to be. Even if, if I'm not in the mood, this is going to be a heavy one. If I'm in the mood, this is going to be a better one. But I am ready to accept what my body has to offer and not more. If you're not in the mood, why go? A, a huge question, yeah. Why go at all to, to something where, you, where you're not in the mood? But this is coming back again to the question of are we escaping or are we celebrating? Yeah. But if you're escaping and taking psychedelics, so that, that, that's, that, that's, uh, an intense, that's an intense party. That's an intense party. Maybe it shouldn't even be a party at all. But sometimes a lot of people say that approaching psychedelics with a question or a crossroads where you don't know where to head is also, is also a thing. You know, if you're searching for answers and you don't know how to let go and take a different perspective, this could be an inspirational... Uh, but what I learned is that when you take psychedelics that it's better to do it in a nature environment first I, time definitely i agree uh, yeah like like uh, any any anything kind of away like away from uh unpredictable surroundings and also all the but, energies of everyone yeah, around yeah. you in a club uh, that, that, that's what i mean like some people are super hungry for that <laughs> 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 um, um we we posted a very cute post about um facing the dancers while while be, being on the dance floor. Uh, a lot of people today face the most. Ninety nine percent of people face the DJ. It 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 used to be the opposite, in in the uh, in the times where the house the house uh, party culture was established. People were standing with their back to the DJ. Sometimes the DJ was even in a separate booth, and nobody uh, uh, nobody was praying to that direction. Everybody was looking at each other, dancing with each other to each other, and I think psychedelics for the good and the bad, increase and enhance the energy and the picture that you get from those people. So either you let it fuel you or you let it come really into you. And this is, a, this is supposed to be like a conscious decision that, that you make. This is, a lot of people say that the LSD is like a 12-hour deal with the devil, but it's actually a 12-hour deal with yourself. You know, if you're not ready, <laughs> if you're not yeah. ready to let everything happen if you're not ready to uh not overcome but to contain all this extra information that is coming into you all that time you're gonna have a bad time it's again <clears throat> i split let's not split su uh, substances into categories let's just uh, maybe maybe uh, put it on the scale of consciousness i know there's a lot of ways you we, you can define consciousness but what what is consciousness for you um, well, well, I mean, I mean, just for the sake of this this scale, yeah. I can say on one end alcohol, and on on the other hand, on the other hand, dimethyltryptamine. You know. Yes. Um, the, the 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 word consciousness. What does it mean? Yes, you know, for you. Because moving, I'm trying moving 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 um, moving away from 
Um, developing a more a, 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 a continually more uh, a con a continual understanding with your ego. Okay, for me, consciousness is having a lot of information of the situation and the surroundings, and s striving for as much information and as much awareness of what is happening right now. This is for me consciousness. So I so, know as much as I can. So like on this, like like if you're if you're driven by ego uh, instead of consciousness, then you're 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 you're, you're, uh, you're, you're rather than kind of. Uh, looking out is uh, like you're looking for validation in you know you're like, how can i how can i use this situation rather than what can i learn from it okay isa what do you think what is consciousness for you yeah, conscious is fully aware fully aware the I, 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 and i think to be i think being fully aware is really in a sober so, so, so th th this goes back to like, say, for example, you were to go into nature and do a proper uh, psychedelic experience. This is the opposite to ego. You know, this if you're, on the one hand, you've got like, um, let's say, um, primal basic behavior in a party environment in a big city, competition, like surrounded by people, just blah, 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 blah. The other end, you're like, you're in nature, you're away from every, every um, uh, kind of, um, uh, societal social framework that you're accustomed to that you've been taught about and you're just you're, you're just being you just are you're aware you're conscious you're observing and you're going deeper into yourself and your environment because you've taken a substance that allows you to uh, without a distraction i must of, ask I, I must ask is uh, something you say that uh for you uh, consciousness could be achieved maximally in only uh, only in a in a sober uh uh, yeah, and, 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 and don't get me wrong, because I think without um, me having used substance, substances um, in, in my life, they, I, I think I would be put into a mental institution because uh, they kept me sane and they kept me going and they gave me also, I went much deeper um, into my emotional status. Um, finding answers, so so I think definitely. But sorry, sorry, is it you found answers through drugs? Well, I, I, so I talk a lot, uh, and and I, and and I'm really open. But if it comes to like really what's going on, um, I, I, I'm not I'm not so much. So so um, so traumas for me were dealt with while being high. Um, and especially at an after party, one on one or, 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 or two or three people, uh, we would talk and then you will hit, you can go deeper. Because also the real emotions are not there because you're, you're, you're uh, in Holland we say afgeflakt, because you are high. And even though you're very alert, because I use cocaine and speed, so you're very alert. Um, but your emotions work, work differently. So talking about certain topics go way more easy. Also, you're more talkative. Well, you're, you're, There's you're a study that shows that uh, uh, talking yeah. traumas, opening up about traumas on MDMA could be yeah, in certain... Also on MDMA. Uh, but yeah. uh, this should also probably be done in more of a laboratorial circumstances and probably not... not I, I know that when you're in a party or an after party with, with your friends, you can open up and talk about stuff, but... I, I do think that you really using substances or really using psychedelics to deal with traumas no, no, no. It, should it, be... It, I, I don't think this is what, what I meant. It is, I, 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 I was a party girl and I definitely party to escape. Not only to escape because I'm still around. So it was definitely so it, it also didn't work. <laughs> it, 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 uh, um, um, it's my life. Um, but, but I say is that, that you can with drugs, what, whatever kind, uh, you can reach certain points that helps either trauma or get um, definitely even if it's painkillers yeah. you get the, the pain out uh, yeah. yeah yeah but <clears throat> like really conscious like making yeah make, this is the question the question I, 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 I think I think but I've never done psychedelics so so I can't compare but for me that works way better uh, sober and especially sober for a longer period is conscious partying Possible? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But you make the decisions. Uh, there, 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 there are being, 
because everyone knows that making decisions intoxicated can be dangerous. <laughs> um, and and um, um, if you're sober for a longer time, and for example, you see a lot of people sliding off, being partying way too hard every weekend. The moment they sober up and they're like, oh, I miss partying, but I can't go every weekend. Then you start dealing with things and conscious partying. You you mentioned so, it in one of the podcasts as yeah, well. Like, 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 so <laughs> it's interesting because we, we just spent, 10 minutes talking about the word consciousness now as opposed to the con like, like I think the context before if I remember right and we talked about conscious partying was more about mm -hmm. mindful partying and being yeah in stepping moment. into I, the party with uh, no regrets and uh, yeah. knowing that there is a life before and after it and yeah, I, not, I not feeling so yeah but, but then, and this was, yeah. this was also conscious partying for me has also become for example um having to not be uh, having, having to be um, assertive to draw boundaries and have like yeah. giving tough love is also part of conscious partying because yeah. it's about being mindful. Um, I think I think like oh, which we, we, we're talking about it now in terms of um, uh, psychedelics also. Do you agree that a lot of substances turn consciousness off? Yeah. And this is what exactly appeals to a lot of people and Definitely. makes partying a very unconscious behavior. Yeah. There is, for me, a majority of unconscious behavior in the party scene. And this is the, one of the explanations for me or for us why we do like, for example, for instance, LSD, because we can take a kind of a step out of this meta, watch it, enjoy it, get the energy from it, if you get used to it. It's a training. It's really a training that you, you must do if you want to and be there knowing everything, not judging anything, and enjoying everything. This is a, a hard, not a mission, but it's really a hard task to take parting into the complete other direction of not shutting off, like, oh, let the wave carry me, but being completely on it, not feeling sorry for it, and like celebrating it full on seeing everybody seeing all the beauty and the ugliness that you can see in the party scene but still loving it and i think this is a this is a challenge but you can do that without lsd as well I, I, if i party i party like i never regret Again, I'm, I'm, but I'm you, not, I'm you not, weren't talking about LSD then, right? Um, you were, I'm, I'm talking you again were. about the scale, the scale of consciousness. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, um, I, I am just afraid, and we, this connects me also to the first topic we touched today, uh, which is uh, consent, yeah. harassment, yeah. primal behavior. I feel that if the party scene <clears throat> would work on its consciousness, which means learnings, which means knowing and understanding and feeling the surroundings while partying, we will have a completely different tendency in behavior <clears throat> than we have now. Uh, again, I'm not judging any substance because who am I to judge? Tried anything myself. But I think that as long as we are running away from consciousness, we will not progress because Consciousness is what makes us different than our, uh, how do I say, primal fathers and mothers. I think there's a theory that says that monkeys, <clears throat> at a certain point of time, started eating mushrooms, which, uh, <laughs> which, brought them, uh, which brought them into the stage of hunting and gathering. <clears throat> I don't know if this theory is right, but I Bears do know. Bears do it as well, right? Huh? Bears. Yes. I don't know who developed. Are the bear kind bears the development of the <laughs> bears of the, that ate? Uh, and the mushroom. And, <coughs> and, and, and dolphins. Grizzly bears, and now they're just hugging bears. Nice. They're probably on MDMA then. <laughs> but, the, okay, so there's just a theory that, that says that <coughs> psychedelics opened our mind to develop. And this is, I think, the key of the word consciousness. For me, consciousness, and we talk about it a lot, uh, for example, we try to understand what is consciousness. And to, to me, personally, being conscious is sitting with you and knowing as much as I can about Rob, knowing as much as I can about Ben, and choosing 
every word wisely, not because of a strategic choice, but because of knowing enough and, 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 and choosing uh, a constructive path to build this conversation so it's, so it's uh, beneficial for, for us both when we communicate. This is consciousness. And, and, and what, by contrast, would be an unconscious interaction in this context? Uh, Want to go to the dark room with these two? I <laughs> thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's, uh, um, and I think the whole, ha, ha, yeah. We can be conscious about these two and having an orgy in the back room. We can be conscious about it. If it's with and consent. Say, if it's with LSD. Yeah. If it's with <laughs> for, for example, if we say, you know what? I think you and I are horny. What do we do with it? You want to tell them? <laughs> Let's, 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 let's call, call it what it is. Call this is something is. that LSD taught me. The hu humility of, first of all, saying what you think yeah. openly, accepting it with humor. People don't know even how to accept that truth. Yeah. They're like, what did you say? You know? And a lot of people are, are afraid of it. You know? They're like, why are you sharing with me your deepest th thoughts right now? When I'm in a very primal, unconscious uh, uh, behavior, I would just act. I would not talk. You know, I think being conscious is also sharing an information with your communication yeah, partner so yeah. they can get more conscious. Um, basically, I, what, what I'm saying is um, I think us as an alternative culture for the mainstream or for the hip hop or whatever, we are trying to open people's eyes. We are trying to to open their hearts and brains and tell them, hey, let's be more conscious. Let's talk, let's talk about consent. Let's talk about unobjectifying women. Let's, uh, this is trying to make things more conscious. Yeah. But then we don't practice what we preach because we come into the party, we see, ah, okay, everybody here are my friends. Then I can go, you know, maybe I can reach but this that's, uh, but hedonistic. But that's not how it goes, right? It's not everyone here is my friend. So uh, it, it, there is always something more going on. Yes, yes. I, 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 I understand that um, our daily life uh, today is super rough and our re reality is super grotesque. So we just want to come together in a closed space and lose ourselves. We want to lose ourselves. And it's to totally painful to sit in a club together to hear the music that we like and then to take LSD and to think, Oh my God, the world is collapsing. There's so much pain in the world. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it seems like a crazy thing to do. Yeah. But how uh, wholesome is it to sit together in this room and say, we are the solution of it, or maybe we are a possible solution of it. Let's have fun tonight. Let's have all the substances in the world, but let's not put our brains off. Let's put them on together and, uh, and, try to cre create an alternative uh, society. I think this is what it's all about, an alternative society. Uh, but I think also like you, 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 we talked about like um, uh, how the scene is in general and this, this kind of like community and uh, new way of looking at things can change the vastly experience of a party. But there is a lot of, a lot of you say, is it possible to party consciously? Yes, but it's not done by the majority of people in this huge, uh, huge, Definitely. vast uh, genre, yes. um, uh, per se. Yeah, I think uh, most of the people that enter the club are there to be shit-faced, and it's, uh, it's okay. But uh, I think there are still mind leaders, which are the artists, the promoters, the people behind the yeah, awareness teams. Getting shit I, I think it's not, not, it's, it's not that, we, that, that they think like, ah, oh, let's go to the club and get shit faces. It's, it's also that they want to go somewhere where they belong or where their friends are or where they feel comfortable because they're not comfortable at home yes. or they feel really sad because they couldn't finish school or so I, I, I and I think shit faces then the second thing, but um, and, and, and that it, that some things are out of control. That that, that was also in the '60s. So yeah. um, that's what we do. I, I guess that 99% of the people in Woodstock were yeah. shit-faced, but yeah. in a good sense, in a maybe in, a, in a conscious way. Why is that way. better than now? Why is why is Woodstock better? Uh, okay. Than now. I have it. Uh, I or I have a suggestion. What was the culture before Woodstock? And after Woodstock? was a complete shift in how you perceive freedom, 
expression of love. The society was super conser conservative uh, at the time that when, when, I mean, Vietnam was going on and people like uh, were completely tied up and suited up. Today, this freedom already exists in well, a certain, I, 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 I don't, not I, completely. I don't know if freedom exists. I, I even think we went backwards. And if you, if, if you, if, if you look at Berlin, first a wall came down and then, and, 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 and then there was purpose and and then everything else happened internet and social media and and i think we don't underestimate it but i think it the, the influence of um, i'm from the generation that had both without internet and with internet um so we are more balanced out but i can imagine that for for a whole generation and that's why we talked about gen c already they grew up with with the whole internet thing and so for them it's maybe way more easy to adjust and adapt to all the information that they get all day long mm -hmm. but um i i think the generation in between the generations you mean that you think that like the, the, their, their bed is made i think it was heavy for them also because we were, um, they were not directly from a war, but now they're in war situations. So, mm. I don't know. I'm protective of the generation. <laughs> no, I just, I just think that the generation of Woodstock had a uh, way more um, motive uh, to, 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 to change the reality. I, I, there's a lot of things that probably have to be changed today still, but the, the reachable freedom that we but have from, today from is... Going, uh, from going on that you could... Uh, uh, go topless to a beach, w which happened during that period, and and now uh, and now fighting again uh, to be topless on a beach. Uh, so so it went there, and then it went uh, down again, and then uh, if you have a topless picture, it can go viral, and 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 all your classmates will get this picture, and you commit suicide. So I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Just FYI, we're getting to an hour and a half now. I'm not <laughs> nice, sure. nice. Really? Yeah, we, we, it, it, time, time flies when you're yeah. having fun, as they say. Yeah, time, uh, time really flies. I mean, this. I, I'm trying to touch this uh, subject from 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 different uh, perspective, and I, I I like what what you both are saying. Again, it's all your your our individual uh, points of view, and I think each one of us has a, a his own or hers uh, her own approach to. Uh, finding inner Find, balance, yeah. Yeah. which is modified by finding, our experience so far, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and I think also finding a way to, because we are all now talking about the same scene, and trying to make the scene that we're in right now a bit better. And, and I think that's exactly. looking back and looking forward and and, yeah. and, and talking about. It. But I think communication and education is um, yes. is key. I mean, thank that like. Thank you also, because I mean, like Ben and I uh, generally don't give a fuck and we'll talk about whatever, but you, you, you've come on and be happy, happy to be open with us and talk about things that might be considered taboo or judged um, because, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's important to, to not make them taboo or judged because then people don't open up yes. about it. Yeah. So about consent, about toxicity yeah. in, in, in the, the, yeah. the gay orgy scene, about, about uh, drug use, about G use, um, about yeah, responsibility and, 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 and yeah, motives, rationale behind. So I think it's good not to yeah, demonize. And to, yeah. Maybe it's a good ending is um, um, we, we are trying our best to educate clubs, to educate promoters, but I think we also have a responsibility to, to educate the dancers, mm. and they're, 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 because we expect dancers to be a certain way. And uh, but I think it's it's all of us together uh, that needs to educate each other. Yeah, I think we we. we if we want to, then we carry a, a huge uh, responsibility. responsibility. Uh, apart yeah. from educating girls, uh, I mean, have, having to educate guys on why girls don't give you their number, that is not something you have to be educated on. <laughs> no, it, it, and th this is what I mean. But this is what ed education I mean. On, on safe space, consent, yeah. Um, safe, safe party, conscious, conscious, yeah. conscious partying. Conscious I mean, th 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 I don't know if that sounds pretentious, but like this, this is a good way of approaching it. Like, you know, I feel like for many people, uh, it's just a paradox or an axiom to to say uh, to say the, the this combination of, of of conscious partying. And I think also the approaches to this world can be completely exactly, different. exactly, but that's exactly. I, but, but that's exactly if if you educate young people um, what substance can do to you or or how you can rave responsible yeah. 
um, uh, and, and, and talk about it. And then I think younger people can make conscious decisions. Uh, you can go and have education and party once in a while. It's, it's all possible. But you also can go out without and go home early and then pass for your exam and go on a binge for three days. But yeah. find the balance. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> if, if, you, if you work hard, play hard, rest hard as well. You know, that is part yeah. of balance. Yeah. You know? Eat healthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Quality over quantity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. And oh, be happy. That's... Oh, yeah, okay, that's okay. Be, be, wait, 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 hang on, hang on. The H word. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and the, I don't mean H because word. you can be down and be happy at the same time, but I'm sitting here and I'm partying. But, I've been partying I mean, all my life and I'm still here. Yeah. So it's, a, it's an, 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 it's an example. Circumstantial, though. It's circumstantial. Like, 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 for me, like, happiness and joy are different things, you know? So happiness is, like... Like like the weather, you know, it can come come and go. I can say, oh, happy to see you today, Isa. I can say, oh, I'm not happy. It's raining. You know, it, it, it's quite volatile. You know, but but joy is more like, yeah, I am happy on a deep level because I'm aligned with. I actually, who see I those need words are, uh, on the opposite way. I think joy is like something that hey, I'm enjoying myself now, but being uh, happy, enjoy, 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 enjoy. Is, uh, yeah. like, but to, yeah. like 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 the, the the emotion joy like 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 to, to yeah. me is more like uh, a deep. Like, so for example, like. Um, this, is how you, this is how you get someone who's in prison for life, but joyful and content because they're like, you know, they're like, like for, for whatever. Well, hey, hey, it's extreme, a when you extreme are example. Yeah. Because I'd be like, like, how are you surviving? Like, you can't, I'm not happy yeah. I'm in prison, but yeah. I'm joyful because I'm here because I, I stood up for what I believed in, or whatever, for example. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, but yeah, be happy when you can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, for um, all this uh, input, I'm again. I still have like a thousand questions yeah. in the, in my head, and probably uh, uh, the put ones, it in the meeting notes. <laughs> yeah, the ones watching us or listening to us would probably also have a lot of questions, which I think we will be more than happy to to answer. Yeah, <coughs> I hope you. to repeat this uh, forum uh, soon. Let's do the trilogy in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, top uh, love seven. Thank you for watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs>